Hello, hello, my fellow humans. So today we are gonna talk about self-doubt and how to get from self-doubt into confidence and how to move forward when you're having self-doubts and you're insecure and you're having no confidence, but how can you still take action and move forward in life? So let's begin. I took many notes in the morning and I think you're gonna get massive value from this. Look how confidently I sound. <laughs> I spoke about this with my husband and I asked him questions about him doubting himself and uh, what would be different in his life if he had had self-doubt and also I asked him if he thinks it is possible to live without self-doubt and he was kind of like yes but then he concluded that no that self-doubt is some type of fear and it's not possible to live completely without it and this was like a little light bulb moment for me because actually self-doubt is a type of fear it's a fear about your own abilities. You doubt yourself if you are able to do something. There are actually bad sides of self-doubt and there is also a good side of self-doubt, but let's begin with bad side. So, obvious one is it is eating away your confidence. And because it is eating away your confidence when you're like questioning yourself all the time. Am I able to do this? Can I do this? What will people think? I am not showing up confidently enough. I am mm, still in my own process. Who am I to do this? Like blah, 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 you know, <laughs> these thoughts. And this is eating away your confidence. And because it is eating away your confidence, it is causing you not to show up and even if you show up you do not show up as powerfully as you could if you wouldn't have that much of a self-doubt like me for example i could show up way more powerfully and if you see my previous videos you can also see there is a progress already now let's get to the good sides of the self-doubt self-doubt is wanting you to improve. If you check in and ask the part of yourself that feels as though it needs to talk to you all the time, uh, it is wanting you to be better, to show up powerfully and to show up in a way that you do things really well. It's like one of the things that my mother used to say to me, if you do something, do it well. And I'm sure many of you got this message that if you do something, do it well. And if you cannot do it well, don't even try. The intention here is good. It is, hmm, I mean, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's just don't cause the shame to our, our family. So what is the cause of self-doubt? Obvious one. It is comparison. You compare yourself to others and you see that they are doing things better than you and you feel that if you cannot do it that well or better, that what's the point of even trying? One huge cause of self-doubt is trauma, like repetitious trauma. When whatever you did was never good enough for your parents or siblings or people you grew up with or if you have toxic people in your life. I, I'm still not sure about this term, toxic people, even though I had some experiences where I felt like this. But what if I was a toxic, a toxic person for other people as well? Anyway, so when you have this trauma and you, you feel like whatever you do is never good enough, you could be having like world-class service or product or whatever, and you would still feel as if it is not good enough. Because 
you have people around you for whom it is never good enough and then you internal internalize all of these doubts and no matter how good you do something you still feel as though you are not good enough another cause of your self-doubt it could also be your smart brain and i mean this not in a sarcastic way but actually your smart brain that is protecting you from harm and wants to keep you healthy i'm gonna give you an example here um a few years ago no it was last year i went to the pool and i jumped from i don't remember the english word like when you jump from height into the water and i first jumped from three meters and then i got up my courage and for the first time in my life i jumped from five meters there were some guys there uh, on the top and if i came up there i felt like i cannot go down by the stairs so i jumped into the pool and i did it once and that was it but that was five meters and you see so many people doing it you know that it's safe but if i wanted to jump from 10 meters or I don't know how many meters like you see people <laughs> on YouTube doing it and you feel like oh my god they are crazy so if I wanted to jump now from 20 meters I would be really doubting myself and this doubt would be safe it wants to keep me safe because probably if, I, if you jump from higher heights you need some training, you need someone to tell you how to do it properly, you need someone along to make sure that you do it in a safe way, you need some practice. Your smart brain wants to keep you safe and it's great to have self-doubt in such cases. So the purpose of self-doubt is to improve first and to get support and to make sure you are safe while you do the things so how to move from self-doubt into confidence and the answer is practice and even more specific answer is regular practice i can see now with the way i'm challenging myself to do videos and become better at public speaking that even if I skip just one day, there are doubts crippling in uh, about my ability to, to do this. And when I do the videos or other things more regularly, you can see the progress. And even b by not seeing the pro progress, but just doing it, you get inspiration and momentum and ideas. And you want to keep doing the thing. And you don't even then think that much about self-doubt and am I good enough, blah, blah, blah. And it's not a confidence issue anymore because you know that as you keep doing it, you're going to get better. And I want you to imagine now a little kid, a baby. I don't know much about babies, but at some point they are starting to try how to walk. We just human beings, we just don't just like uh, walk a few hours after being born as do baby cows but we need practice first we need to grow our muscles and i was looking at the baby from my friend and it was so cute how he was doing these downward dog positions and things that seemed like yoga movements naturally from his inner self and the point with all of this is babies don't even have the concept of confidence and they don't have self-doubt they are just doing the things instinctual and also they probably do it because they see people around them do it imagine if you grew up in a family with acrobats you would not just learn how to walk but you would learn to do all kinds of things with your body that 
right now you are not confident doing and you would righteously have self-doubts if you wanted to do them right away. If you would join a circus now and wanted to do these things, <laughs> it would be really great if you had uh, self-doubt and some confidence issues <laughs> so that you practice first and don't cause yourself harm by jumping from... I don't know where. Um, so, uh, 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 um, yes, the child just does the work every day and this is the thing. You do the work every day, uh, 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 you practice, you have fun and you're not pressuring yourself to be great at it right away. And also the child doesn't go like, oh, everybody else is walking and I'm still not walking and what if I'm never gonna be able to walk properly and blah blah blah. No, it just does the work every day. <laughs> it even doesn't think about showing up. It, it just does the thing and that must be a light bulb moment for all of us. It's kind of like you move self-doubt and confidence and pressure, all of this, you just move it away and you do the work. But since we are human beings and we went through a lot of things in our lives, it's natural that self-doubts are gonna come in. So if you are traumatized and you have those crippling self-doubts, the question is, what is the baby step? Baby step. What is the baby step that you feel safe right now to make? And if you are severely traumatized, it's gonna take some time, and it's gonna probably take more time than you expect it to take. If you are traumatized, it is sometimes really hard to take action, and you have crippling self-doubt and you're not feeling as that little baby who is learning to walk at all. You just feel like shit and I understand you. I've been there. About seven years ago I had a burnout and with burnout came a bunch of things. I'm just gonna read the bullet points so that I don't get too much into my story now. But with burnout came Dark Night of the Soul. And that shit took years, so I don't know why it's called Dark Night, it's Dark Years of the Soul. And I was not feeling my previous business, but I was afraid to transition, and transitioning into coaching took years and caused severe self-doubts as well. And I had some relationships that ate away all of my confidence, severe trust issues, I didn't trust people at all. I even felt paranoid and I had low energy. I wanted to sleep all the time and I didn't feel safe at all to show up. But still, because I'm this type of person who is very driven and success is very important to me and I love being productive, I was still asking myself like what action can I take now? And this is the thing that I want to transmit to you now. It is, what is the baby step that you can take right now? What is the baby step that you feel safe to take? And what helps me a lot during this dark night of the soul, dark years of the soul, it was inner work and getting support and uh, there's a book that I will link below about complex PTSD and this really helped me a lot to realize that I have really severe trauma issues. <laughs> I don't want to completely identify myself with trauma, but still it helped me a lot to read this book and to make myself a plan, like a five-year plan in which I'm gonna become my confident self and it's now third year and I'm progressing. So 
it helps a lot to get support and if you cannot get support read books and watch youtube videos and do the work you feel safe to do and also try to hang out with people that feel safe people with whom you can be yourself without feeling the pressure that you need to impress them with your achievements those people with whom you can be your set self and your happy self again focus on the baby steps that you can take so oh i wanted to share this during these dark years of my soul i still did a lot of work and i just realized that a few days ago when i started thinking about this video that during those times i did so many things on my website and became familiar with so many tech stuff so that now when i feel more confident to show up tech things i feel super confident about this it's like i'm not a programmer or even person who is super into tech stuff but i can do all these things like wordpress like website design i'm familiar with newsletters all the things like signups uh, opt-ins uh, all the things that you need to run an online business and a lot of time to set up i mean we have so many amazing tools now but it still takes time we have those tools to save us time but it still takes time to set them up and i did that during those years when i didn't feel safe to show up i still did those baby steps little actions and now when i feel safer to show up i have all of this stuff ready i don't have to start making my website from the ground up because it already is and you can sign up right away to my newsletter and automations are working and you will just a second okay so now i'm not completely sure where i stayed anyway let's go to the next point so the thing that really can help you and i know this from my own experience because i created this tool and i use it now for years and every time when i get into this state where i don't know how to move forward when i have all this mental fog i use this tool and it's called the mental fog remover and i created it <laughs> it is a journaling tool that you can do on one page and it is really simple and it helps you tackle the mindset part the mental part and you get clarity on what are your next action steps and you also get clarity on how using this will serve other people because us humans we are very altruistic and it's very often our motivation that we help others as well and you also get the clarity of like what is inside your control regarding your problem and what is outside of your control and every time you do this exercise you get clarity and you know precisely what is your next action to take and like every freaking time when i do this exercise i actually fear inspired to take that action and when i take it i get momentum and i start moving and the problems start to disappear and even if it returns back i can do the thing again and then move again forward because this is it what i'm trying to convey we are humans self-doubts are gonna come back even if you do all the mindset work and all the belief work some things are just sticky and they're coming back and it really helps when you have a tool that helps you to put the things down on paper and see clearly like what is area of your control and you just go and do that thing and the self-doubt can chill at the back seat for some time and you can get this tool completely for free on my website link below it is a n i t a p u k s i c 
uh, com. That's my website <laughs> in case in case you are listening to this. But link is below and you get the tool completely for free. And why it is for free, I explain in the first email. I want everyone to have this tool in their toolbox. If you want to work with me one on one, you can also sign up on my web page. I help you become more selfish in a good way. I help you to strip away the things that you are not so that you can shine your true self and impact the world by being you and living your best life. So thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs> in my notes.